So do you know, why does reality exist? I never would have thought of that, but it, that makes total sense. What is the purpose of a human life? Of course. No, no, no. Of course it's that. All right, well, just one last question. What is this? Gotcha. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Curtis. This is the show Life After Death. This section, we're talking about how heaven time is not time. Swedenborg makes the claim that angels, you know angels, like, oh, they, they don't know what time is. So how would that work? And does that mean, who cares? Does that mean anything for us? We begin in heaven and hell 163. In heaven, which Swedenborg went and visited and saw, and you are headed there, so pay attention. In heaven, there are no years or days, but only changes of state. There's not increments of time. There are changes of state there. So why would that be different? Why would there be that in, this, in heaven, but yet here on planet Earth, we have days and hours and seconds and all that. How did we get to where we have stuff like days and hours? How do we measure time in the physical world? The two main measurements of time, which is a year and then a day, those have obvious physical precursors. So the Earth, you may not know this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Earth goes around the sun. I mean, you know, it's Galileo. Earth goes around the sun and each time it goes back and comes back in the same place it started, that's a year. Makes total sense why you would call that one unit of something. Also, Earth is spinning. Whew, pretend I'm spinning the Earth like a basketball. It spins on its axis, and when you get back to the same place you were before, that's a whole day, night. That's, a, that's one day. So that makes, that's, you can't get around that. There's just, of course, you'd have days and years. Hours, we have 24 hours in a day. Nah, we kind of made that up. I mean, it, in this website called Science ABC, they said the 24-hour day concept comes from the ancient Egyptians. They're always doing stuff. They divided the day into 10 hours with devices like shadow clocks and then added one hour at each end. So you could kind of tell by based on the shadow, but there were, it started to get arbitrary. Uh, ancient Greeks proposed this 24-hour day. Then to divide an hour into 60 minutes, that was from ancient Babylonian mathematics, but we we made that up kind of all based on the, the day and the year. So partially just because of physical stuff, partially because of history, we got ways that we measure time and that uh, applies to everybody because of the way things move. But as we've talked about in our recent episodes, in the afterlife, things don't move in the same way. Yes, there's a sun, like we base our physical time on the Earth's relationship to the sun. There's a spiritual sun, but the spiritual sun doesn't move in the same way. The places people live in the afterlife don't rotate the sun in the same way. It doesn't follow these same kind of fixed external rules. Everything in the spiritual world, you have a spirit, which is the conscious part of you. Everything spiritual is driven by consciousness. So whether it's day or night has to do with what kind of changing state of mind you have what and where you are in relation to the sun is your relationship to God so it's about you and what's going on inside you that's what makes the variation in the spiritual world this is from heaven and hell 162 even though things keep happening in sequence like oh yeah now I'm going to walk over there now I'm over there and progressing in heaven the way they do in the world still angels have no notion or concept of time and space. The lack is so complete that they simply do not know what time and space are. So it's not like heaven, you could just go mm, forward and then rewind. It, it, things operate kind of like they do here, but still, 
it's fundamentally different. So let's look into that and look at how that, the difference between spiritual time and physical time is already showing up inside you. Part two, angels don't know what time is. If you were to start to, to talk to an angel, let's say that you, you got to, oh, I'm having this vision, I get to see an angel, and you said to that angel, can I talk to you about fixed increments of time? Can I talk to you about hours and seconds? And the angel might just like, hmm, what? What are you talking about? Is that an L-165? Since angels have no concept derived from time, as we in our world do, they have no concept of time or of the things that depend on time. They do not even know what all these temporal things are, like a year, a month, a week, a day, an hour, today, tomorrow, or yesterday. In case you wanted a really comprehensive list of you know, time-based stuff. Which is a bizarre statement for Swedenborg to make because he says that angels are just people who have gotten into heaven, and which is heaven is like a state of mind, so their bodies have died, they're in the afterlife, they, they've opened up to a bunch of love and truth from God, and so now they're in heaven. But they, they used to be people. I guess some of them died when they were little, you know, young, young children, maybe didn't really realize much about time. But you'd think they'd still have a knowledge of time, and I was pondering this, and this is one thing that came to me. You know, let me tell you a story. One time, I tutored someone in eighth grade math. So I was looking through this newsletter for my local community and they said, hey, here's a job you can tutor somebody in eighth grade math. And so there was this girl who needed help with her math. And I thought, I'm, you know, I'm not like I didn't major in math, but I was, I was pretty good at it. And it's just eighth grade math. So I know I can do this. I did not know how to do her math. There's some days I did, but there was days when she would bring in her assignments and she'd say, so we, this is what we need to do. And I was like, oh yeah, how do you think that we do it? And um, luckily she could like squeak it out. But I, I probably learned that at some point, but because it was a long time ago and I don't use it, no offense to eighth grade math, I don't use it in my daily life. That part of my mind like got mothballed or something. I would think that angels who are living in this world that doesn't have time or space they're just not in touch with that part of their mind. Actually, that part of their mind would make it hard to navigate the world that they're in. So there's this, because our worlds are different enough, there's sort of like a language barrier between angels and us because we are so time focused. And probably when you saw the title of this video, you're like, that's weird. Angels don't know what time is. We're so time focused. And they're not. How do we communicate? Luckily, Swedenborg describes a sort of like, a Google Translate that happens. Like when we communicate with them, our time-based concepts, there's an analog in the non-time-based world that they live in. This is from Heaven and Hell 165. When angels hear these expressions from one of us, angels are always kept in contact with us by the Lord. So they're aware in some form what we're doing. So when we're going on and on about time stuff, they perceive states instead and things that have to do with state. So our natural concept, time, is changed into a spiritual concept, state of mind, with the angels. This is why expressions of time in the word mean states, and why things proper to time, like the ones listed above, mean the spiritual things that correspond to them. Check out the Bible and just look at the way the Bible talks about time. In, this, in Psalms, it says, I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. From that day, they, oh, and Isaiah in particular, so from that day, in that day, Tyre will be forgotten for 70 years. There's so much time, and the, the patriarchs living to these very old but very regimented ages. Exodus is, now this is when you shall offer on the altar two lambs a year old regularly each day. So on, so on. That is because the Bible is the intersection between natural and spiritual things. So in the Bible, all those mentions of days and years, we read it like that. Angels can connect to the spiritual meaning, the states that that stuff stands for. It's the crossroads, baby. As we talked about last episode, states mean states of mind, which are powered by particular kinds of love and wisdom or feelings or perspectives that we have. So you, you have been through states 
we, we recognize like, oh, there's there's a sure there's your one year old, your two year old, your three year old, and so on, three years old, and so on. But there's also the childhood state of mind. There's the, the toddler state of mind. There's the adolescent state of mind, the adult state of mind. And you can say, oh, this this person, they're 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 nine, but they're like young for nine. You know, maybe they still have more of a childlike state of mind. Or you say you're you're old beyond your years because you've been through something difficult. The states don't have to sync up exactly with the years that go by. But throughout adulthood, our state keeps changing and growing according to the, the spiritual growth and development that we go through. It's not really tied to a clock or calendar. Do you know, like for example, if, if somebody is, wow, this person is 77, they're going to be really spiritually advanced. They're really going to be kind and loving. It's not, it's not how it works. It has, that's like voluntary. The, the, the progression in state is different than the progression in time. They can sync up, but they don't have to. So states are not really tied to a clock or a calendar. They're tied to something deeper in us. And that's how the angels see it. So here's the, here's the translation mechanism. Here's how it works if you're ever talking to angels. When we think about a day or a year, or the Bible talks about a day or a year, angels think about states of life in general. So if we think spring or morning or infancy or childhood, all of which are about these beginnings, angels think the beginning of a new phase of love and wisdom. They are in spring. They are in morning when they are in the beginning of a new phase of love and wisdom. When we think summer, noon, youth or young adulthood, angels think a phase of love and wisdom in its full vitality. And when we think autumn, evening, mature adulthood, angels think a phase that's coming to its fruition and end. Same thing with harvest. Like you plant all year and then you harvest in the autumn. When we think about night or winter or old age, angels think about when a phase has ended and we're getting ready for the next phase. And that, that, that translation of our thoughts into stuff the angels can interact with, it goes the other way too. This is from Heaven Hell 168. The angels who talk with us never use the natural concepts that are proper to us, all of which derive from time, space, matter, and the like. They use spiritual concepts, all of which derive from states and their various changes in and around angels. However, when the angelic concepts, which are spiritual, flow into us, they change instantly and spontaneously into those natural concepts proper to us, which exactly correspond to the spiritual ones. Neither the angels nor we are aware of this, but still this is how all inflow of heaven occurs for us. So when we say, when I say on this show all the time that, that angels influence your thoughts, that's how it's happening. It's not usually, I, I guess there can be exceptions, but it's not like, think about this. That's the only example I can think of. Think about this. Instead, it's angels are talking about maybe some deep, complicated complex thoughts about spiritual renewal and maybe we get in us just this feeling of hopefulness and like in maybe we, an image of a sunrise or we get those feelings when we're seeing the sunrise or think about it there's something on our end that kind of answers to the deeper stuff that they have on their end that's also the way it works in dreams that actually the things that show up on our dreams can be based on what angels are talking about, but it falls into the things we have in our memory, like the people we know, the places, the kinds of things that are proper to us. So there's this communication, and if you know how to look for it, you can notice it a lot more often. Oh yeah, and one more thing about angels. They understand eternity differently than we do. This is from Heaven and Hell 167. Since angels have no notion of time, they have a different concept of eternity than we earthly people do. By eternity, angels perceive an infinite state, not infinite time. Actually, Swedenborg experienced why the angelic perspective on eternity is better and how it can solve a problem that comes up when you're trying to think about forever. I was thinking about eternity once and using a concept of time, I could grasp what to eternity entailed namely without end, but not what from eternity entailed, and therefore not what God did before creation from eternity. As my anxiety mounted because of this, I was raised into the sphere of heaven and therefore into the perception of eternity shared by angels. 
This shed light for me on the fact that we ought not to think about eternity in temporal terms, but in terms of state, and that when we do, we can grasp what from eternity entails, which was actually done for me. Yeah, it's freaky to think about, well, okay, what was God doing a hundred years before any creation happened? What was he doing a billion years before? What about 20 trillion, gazillion? That's like, it's creepy. But that's not really how it is. It's an eternity of state, which I don't know what that means. I think it would be something like God is and always has been and always will be who he is in the state that he is. Swedenborg actually had more stories to tell about this time or lack of time topic too. So in the next section, we're going to do a little like story time. We begin our Swedenborg story section with a story about how just how foreign time and space concepts are to angels. There were some angels who were let very intimately into my thoughts, all the way into natural ones that contained a mass of material from time and space. However, since at that point they couldn't understand anything at all, they promptly withdrew. And after they had withdrawn, I heard them talking, saying that they had been in darkness. So time and space thinking actually messed mess them up. Thinking about time and space for them who live in a non-time and space based world that seemed to, that seemed to drag them into a much more restricted, limited level of thinking, which is it's, it's what we know, but it's really dim for them compared to the heavenly thought that they're in. Swedenborg tells more in this same passage about this story and this is the paragraph starts off i have been allowed to know from experience what angels ignorance of time is like there was a particular individual from heaven whose nature did allow him to be let into natural concepts such as we have i talked with him afterward person to person and at first he did not know what it was that i was calling time so I actually had to tell him how the sun seems to travel around our earth and make years and days, and that as a result, years are divided into four seasons and into months and weeks and days into 24 hours, and that these times recur at fixed intervals. This gives rise to our expressions for time. He was astonished when he heard this and said that he had not known that kind of thing, but only what states were. It seems weird that angels don't know what time is, but if you think about it, we kind of don't know what time is. I mean, our spirits don't really know what time is. Your spirit's a conscious part of you. So you can have something that, and I just want to show a couple of examples of how we experience both, we're very aware of time, but also this timeless nature of our consciousness. You can have something that happened to you years ago that's still it's still like present like it still feels like it just happened or you can you can relive a memory that feels very present to you also years seem to go by more quickly as we age so i'm i'm almost 40 i'm 39 so you could say given life expectancy i'm not even halfway through my life but everybody knows, like I've lived more than half my life consciously. Like the first 20 years of your life takes so long compared to the next 20 years. Think about how long a summer used to feel when you were in school and, and you were in you're in second grade. And it's like summer is starting. Uh, you just swirl into this endless, there's no school, you go to your friend's house. For me now, it's like, oh, was it summer? I, I didn't even notice that summer came and went. Our, also, our, our spirits can feel younger than our bodies feel. This is why it's weird to be old, because you feel like, wait, I'm not. What's, what's that Goldfinger song? Here I am, getting older all the time, looking older all the time, feeling younger in my mind. <laughs> You're welcome. So a, a, we have a part of us 
that already kind of lives in that world. Angels have just left the time side behind. This conversation continued between Swedenborg and this angel. Swedenborg said to the person from heaven that people on earth do have some idea of the way things are in the spiritual world. He gives the example of when, when people die here, we say they, they've left tempor temporal things and have passed beyond time. We also, Swedenborg gives the example, which I didn't give yet, which is that time passes more quickly when we're enjoying ourselves. When something is fun, oh, it's already over. And if the more we're hoping for something or expecting something, uh, it can go faster. If we don't like something, it can go forever. Like hopefully this episode does not seem like it's lasting forever to you. And actually in Swedenborg's day, scholars were starting to ask, what are time and space? Is this something, even back then in the 1700s, is this just a... Is this actually something intrinsic to reality or is it some kind of attribute that's fixed to the individual or what is it? There seems to be some cracks in between reality and time and space. That's accelerated in recent times. You had Einstein studying the nature of time. This is from the American Museum of Natural History's website. In the special theory of relativity, not a name for a theory, the special theory, Einstein determined that time is relative. In other words, the rate at which time passes depends on your frame of reference. And even since Einstein, there's more modern studies and questions about time keep going. This is from space.com. Opinion is divided, but many physicists and philosophers now suspect that time is not fundamental. Rather, time emerges out of something more fundamental, something non-temporal, something altogether different. So it could be that in this day, 2023, both science and spirituality are encouraging us to hold the concept of time loosely. And angels who have moved into the deeper, truer state of existence, that is heaven, they don't even really need it anymore. I think the advice that Swedenborg would give us about this whole time thing is that we even though we do have to operate based on time in this world, don't reject the notion of sometimes thinking beyond time. This is from Heaven and Hell 169. A natural person may believe that we would have no thought if concepts of time, space, and matter were taken away from us, that all our thought is based on these foundations. Let such people know, though, that thoughts are limited and constrained to the extent that they derive from time, space, and matter, and that they are freed and expanded to the extent that they do not derive from such things, because to that same extent, the mind is raised above bodily and worldly considerations. This is the source of angels' wisdom, which is so great that we must call it incomprehensible, since it does not fit into ideas that are formed merely from these lower concerns. Is going to be, you're going to have to know when it's 7.30. But we can at times take a little trip in the mind to, to be considering not just the most external layer of reality, but just think about states. Think about love and truth and the deeper things of life, the things that don't go away. We can take little trips into this angelic state of mind. And it's probably good to at least semi-regularly lose yourself a bit in that timelessness. Let your thoughts fly free of that and, and get up in sort of the angelic perspective of looking at life as more about feelings, concepts, love, truth, and letting that fly independently of this thing, this useful but sometimes constraining thing that we call time.